Hi, it's Mark from Top Local. I'm here with Simon Kelly of InSync Physio in Vancouver, one of Vancouver's best physiotherapy clinics, many time winners of best physiotherapy clinic in Vancouver as voted by their customers. And Simon's a physiotherapist there. He's actually from Ireland of all places originally. So love the accent, love what he's got to say. He's an expert at getting you feeling better. And we're going to talk about shoulder dislocation today, a really painful subject. What was going on with this client, Simon? Cheers, Mark. Thanks for having me again. This client was a snowboarder, a 30-year-old. He came in, I think it was two weeks after the injury, and lots of shoulder pain was sort of cradling his arm across the chest, kind of like in a sling position, and his wrist was kind of hanging down like so, pretty limp. So we had a discussion what happened, obviously, so he was snowboarding, so it was pretty traumatic. He said his shoulder dislocates pretty frequently. I think he said like anywhere between 20 and 25 occasions in his lifetime. But generally, it just goes back in and he sort of rehabs it himself, as he says. But this time was a little bit different because he had like no use of his wrist. As, that's why his wrist was hanging down like so. A lot of the nerves that supply those muscles had been damaged, which was kind of a new presentation to him. So he was uh, pretty worried when I first saw him, actually. So we went through the subjective. That was pretty important stuff to know. There definitely was some nerve damage. I had to clear the neck first because sometimes the nerve roots come from the neck. So the neck seemed to be intact. But we have a lot of nerves that pass out through our top of our shoulder here called your brachial plexus. And before they go out under, under the clavicle and top of the first rib, and that, they can sometimes be damaged going down into the arm and into the forearm and into the wrist. So first protocol for him was actually to send him for an x-ray to make sure he hadn't fractured the top of his humerus because one of the nerves, the radial nerve, brings the wrist up. So it extends the wrist, in other words. That's why his wrist was down. So I was hoping that he hadn't fractured the top of his arm. Good news for him, that differential diagnosis was ruled out because he didn't have any fractures. No hill sacs fractures, which is a fracture in the humerus, and no humerus fracture in a different part of the humerus. So that was all good. In theory, we should have probably sent him for MRI at that moment, but it was going to take a long time and he just wanted to start rehab. So we got right into it, basically. So first protocol was to really get his nerves firing up again we done that by putting on electrical muscle stimulation it's called ems kind of like jumping a car is the analogy i would use we're just kind of getting electrical nerve impulses firing from the muscles to the brain in other words to get this wrist moving so like he also had no triceps so he couldn't extend his arm above his head which means against gravity so very very weak at that moment in time so then we just started firing up with the electrical muscle stimulation and got it working and then his wrist started to come back moving again which was fantastic so most of the work early on was getting his nervous system back working i suppose the wiring from his brain to his forearm and then the rest of the treatment was really just stability in the shoulder he had to avoid the high five position initially because the, the shoulder can come out forwards so we avoided that initially but then we do eventually have to go into that as the weeks progress because he clearly has to use his arm in a functional position if he wants to go back snowboarding again. So we did rehab him. We got him back. I did send him to a neurologist just to be extra safe a few weeks in, just to be sure that the nerves weren't completely damaged. And he said, it's all okay. It should come back in three to six months, which it did. And he was back on the slopes within five or six months after that injury. However, I did say to him, based on the 20 dislocations that he did have previously, that he might want to go and see and an orthopedic specialist, just because it was pretty stable when I left him, but I really wanted him to get it checked out even further, just to be sure he may need surgery at some point in the future, but he really wasn't a big fan of going under the knife. So that's kind of where I left him. We definitely stabilized it, and it was definitely pretty good when I left him, but I would have liked another opinion from a specialist, which is what he was going to do. So would that be because the ligaments have been stretched or and tendons have been stretched too far? Absolutely. Absolutely, Mark. Like when, like someone who's dislocated his shoulder that many times, you know, it's highly likely that it's going to kind of continue to dislocate unless you get it surgery. So all those ligaments and tendons are going to be overstretched. It's going to be too lax in the shoulder and it's going to continue to fall forward. And in his case, he was actually starting to damage some of his nervous system. So that was something I really wanted to get across to him, even though he was young and a 30 year old male and he was clearly an adrenaline junkie who wanted to get back on the mountains. <laughs> I had to give him that information, expert advice to be like, look, I think you still need to see an orthopedic surgeon just to tighten up that shoulder and you might be looking at surgery in, in your own best interest if you want to stay in the slopes. 
in the coming few years. Is there any ongoing protocol that you would have recommended to him to try and help with that? A- absolutely, Mark. Yeah, I would have given him a huge amount, not a huge amount, but a couple of very important exercises to kind of stabilize the shoulder. Sometimes we do closed kinetic chain exercises, like wall push-ups where the hand is actually fixed. That's a bit safer because the, the bottom of the hand is fixed. And then we do open kinetic chain, which is when your hand is free in space like mine. But I would have been going into this position eventually, which we were doing actually, and he was coping pretty, pretty well. It's just on his occasion, based on his history, clinically he seemed pretty stable. But just that many dislocations, for me, I was like, maybe he needs to see a specialist too at the end. But yeah, for sure, we gave him lots of stuff to work on in his own time, which he should be doing actually every couple of weeks for numerous months after that, based on his history. Yeah, because he, snowboarding, he's probably going to fall again. He's probably going to fall on his shoulder one way or another, whether it's with his arm outstretched or just directly on the shoulder. And that Absolutely. ballistic impact could easily, if it's loose already, yeah. it's going to dislocate it again, right? Absolutely. Like, and he, he, he kind of appeared to think it was kind of okay because it just kept relocating. But I was trying to tell him that you can't just continue to go on like this forever. But I liked his enthusiasm and his positivity. It's probably why he got better so well. But at the same time, he may have been looking at surgery at some point. And that was my opinion when he left. But very interesting case with the nerves and that in his arm. Seeing him progress against gravity was pretty, pretty interesting. And it can come back. That's what I would like to get across in this video. Pretty scary when your your wrist is hanging down like that and you're wondering, is it severed or is it ever going to come back? Nerves usually regrow one millimeter a day when they're damaged. So it can grow back, in other words. We just have to make sure it grows back correctly and you get all the movement back into your arm. There you go. If you need some help with your shoulders, got shoulder issues, and you don't want to be 80 years old and still have, you can't sleep on your side because your shoulder is so buggered from not looking after it. The guys to see, InSync Physio, give Simon Kelly a call. You can reach him at the Vancouver Camby Street office. 604-566-9716. Check it out if you want to book, InSyncPhysio.com. You can book for both Vancouver and the Burnaby office. Or if you're in Burnaby, give them a call there at 604-298-4878. Call, get in there, get after it, get looked after sooner rather than later so that you can enjoy the rest of your life. Thanks, Simon. Cheers, Mark. Thanks very much. See you soon.